Assessing the integumentary system. Initial assessment. 1. Identify the patient. This ensures you are examining the correct individual and establishes trust. It aligns with the nursing principle of patient identification and safety. By prioritizing patient identification, nurses uphold ethical and professional standards, promote patient safety and trust, and lay the foundation for effective communication and collaboration throughout the examination. 2. Explain the purpose and answer questions. This promotes informed consent and allays patient anxiety. It aligns with the nursing principles of patient autonomy and communication. 3. Perform hand hygiene. This prevents the spread of infection and adheres to infection control protocols, a core aspect of nursing practice. Adherence to professional standards. Hand hygiene is a core component of infection control guidelines established by national and international organizations. Following these guidelines reflects professional adherence to best practices. Upholding the ethical principle of non-maleficence, minimizing the risk of harm to patients through infection prevention aligns with the core ethical principle of do no harm. Demonstrates respect for patients' bodily autonomy. Hand hygiene shows respect for the patient's right to a clean and safe environment during their examination. Timeliness matters. Perform hand hygiene before and after direct patient contact and during the assessment as needed, particularly after touching potentially contaminated areas. Be a role model. Encourage and remind colleagues and patients to practice hand hygiene, creating a culture of safety and infection prevention. Assessing the skin. 1. Inspect overall coloration. Skin color variations can indicate dehydration, malnutrition, anemia, cyanosis, jaundice, or other systemic conditions. Aligns with assessment of physiological status. 2. Inspect for vascularity, bleeding, bruising, detects potential injuries, circulatory issues, or medication side effects. Aligns with assessment of circulatory and integumentary integrity. 3. Inspect for lesions. Early detection of wounds, rashes, or infections allows for prompt intervention and prevents complications. Aligns with wound assessment and infection control principles. 4. Palpate skin temperature. Assess for fever, inflammation, or circulatory problems. Aligns with assessment of thermal regulation and circulatory integrity. 5. Palpate for texture and moisture. Detects dryness, dehydration, infection, or skin disorders. Aligns with assessment of skin integrity and comfort. 6. Assess skin turgor, indicates hydration status and potential nutritional deficiencies, aligns with assessment of nutritional status and fluid balance. 7. Palpate for edema, detects fluid accumulation, which can point to heart, kidney, or liver problems. Aligns with assessment of fluid balance and potential complications. 8. 
Palpate lesions with gloves. Protects both the patient and healthcare provider from infection. Aligns with infection control principles. Nine, inspect nail angle, shape, and color, detects clubbing, which can indicate respiratory or cardiovascular issues, and other nail changes that may indicate health problems, aligns with assessment of systemic health and potential complications. Ten, palpate nail for texture and capillary refill assesses circulation and potential underlying conditions, aligns with assessment of circulatory integrity. Eleven, inspect hair and scalp, detects infestations, fungal infections, or hair loss, which can be signs of malnutrition, stress, or other health concerns aligns with assessment of overall health and potential underlying conditions. 12. After the procedure, 1. Perform hand hygiene, prevents the spread of infection following contact with the patient, aligns with infection control principles. Performing hand hygiene before and after an integumentary assessment goes beyond adhering to basic infection control principles. It serves various significant functions within the context of nursing practice. Patient safety reduces risk of colonization and infection. The patient's skin may be compromised due to wounds, rashes, or other conditions increasing their susceptibility to infections. Hand hygiene minimizes the transfer of germs that could colonize and lead to infections. Contributes to a safe healthcare environment. Consistent hand hygiene practices by all healthcare providers contribute to a cleaner and safer environment for everyone. Two, document findings. Accurate documentation ensures continuity of care and allows for monitoring changes in the patient's condition. Aligns with communication and record-keeping principles. Thank you for listening.